Hey guys, what's up? And today I have nothing better to do than to do another review of a Gorillaz album. And this time it's the 2010 Plastic Beach. Mm. <laughs> Gorillaz is a virtual band consisting of 2D, Noodle, Russell, and Murdoch. And it's led by a real life musician called Damon Albarn, who is also in Blur. And it's illustrated by Jamie Hewlett. And this is the th 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 third, third phase of Gorillaz. Because for every single studio album, the characters in the band gets more and more humanized. And for their debut in their amazing sophomore album, Demon Days, they blended dark pop, hip hop, and punk rock in ways that you'll hardly expect. Especially on Demon Days, where they perfected their sound and presented some of the catchiest and most colorful songs of the decade. On Plastic Beach, it's almost the same, except it has a more centralized concept behind it, which is literally a uh, Plastic Beach. And it sounds more childish and fun and less dark and sneaky. And we also see this album relying heavily on disco beats and synths, which is a bit unlike the very instrumentally varied Demon Days. Still, this album has some of the most unexpected and weirdest features. The album starts off with an orchestral intro, which is actually pretty excellently composed because of the buildup of anticipation from the pulsating strings, which I thought are pretty cutesy and interesting. And this track features Sinfonia Viva which I assume is an orchestra, so starting the record off featuring an entire orchestra, that's pretty ballsy and whack. Then we actually get into the album with Welcome to the World of the Plastic Beach, featuring Snoop D.O.G, as well as Hypnotic Brass Ensemble. Oh boy. The revolution will be televised. And the pollution from the ocean, now with devotion. We get these very sharp but chill, soothing, laid-back, relaxing, trumpets blasting very excitingly with Snoop Dogg with a super chill and cool delivery. And he's not rapping all the time on this track. This track is mainly instrumentals, but occasionally Snoop Dogg goes in and does a couple of lines that sounds more like spoken word than rapping. And the music video is awesome too, we see Snoop Dogg in his natural habitat, chilling around, dancing a little bit, says a couple lines, enjoying life. I'm giving this track an 8 out of 10. And for the third track, we have something more meaty and solid, and that is White Flag. Look, yo, no castaway, no survivor, I ain't lost and this ain't shipwrecked. It features Bashi, Kano, and the National Orchestra for Arabic music. What in the fuck? And the first half of the track is basically legitimately Arabic music. We get the swirly strings and the little cutesy percussions. Then the instrumentals transition into a more bouncy and hard instrumental where Bashi and Kano raps on it. Even though I don't think this song is bad, it's a hell of an odd placement as the actual first track after two intro cuts. And I feel like the song itself needs some spicing up, but nonetheless, I'm giving White Flag a 6 out of 10. Then we have Rhinestone Eyes, which is the kind of music that I signed up for when I listened to Gorillaz. The track starts off with a very constant, idly beat that sounds like radio signals, but more metallic. Then Damon Albarn goes in as 2D, and he raps a little bit on this track, which I really love. And every now and then, the track breaks into a rough, intoxicating, and gross synth section, which is super cashy. Rain is falling like rhinestones from the sky. And it also contrasts 2D's softness a lot. And I also appreciate the additional sound effects on this track. I'm giving Rhinestone Eyes a 9 to a 10 out of 10. Then it's Stylo, which is actually my first ever Gorilla song. The song that got me in. The song that hooked me. It has a very grimy and dark flavored bass guitar and a very crunchy drum beat. The song starts off with a super catchy refrain. 
overload, 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 coming up to the overload. And then 2D sings in such a melancholic and downtrodden way with some oddly poetic lyrics about electric is the love. Most Def also has rap verses in this song that are very filtered, and his flow is very catchy and fitting. It reminds me of Death Grips a little bit. And this song also features Bobby Womack with his gargly vocals and Bruce Willis in the video. And altogether, the song is purely genius and incredibly catchy. This song also has this sci-fi post-apocalyptic feel that's very rough and dirty. I'm giving Stylo a 10 out of 10. The next track, Super Fast Jellyfish, comes off to me as some sort of joke song that somehow ended up on the album. The song starts off with what it seems to be an audio clip of a microwave commercial. Then after that, we get a very goofy beat with De La Soul and Gruff Rise rapping on top, throwing references like Frosted Delights, Crunchy Carrots, and Aluminum. And the chorus of the song is very hideous and idiotic. I really feel like this song is more of a joke song than poking fun at the industry than an actual song. I'm giving Super Fast Jellyfish a 6 out of 10. But to climb back up the horse, we get Empire Ants, which has a very euphoric and dreamy Asian-flavored strings instrumental that's purely beautiful, plus lo-fi drumming that sounds like ants marching. 2D comes in beautifully with his soft and gentle vocals, and then the song kind of tunes down midway in order to build up to a very explosive climax with these super grimy and epic synths. It's like traveling to the edge of the world to see the beauty that it is. Wow, and we also get a very driving beat as Little Dragon performs. The vocalist of Little Dragon gives a beautiful and intimate delivery, and overall, it's a huge eargasm. I'm giving Empire Ants a straight 10. Glitter Freeze is a song that relies even more on synths, and it features Mark E. Smith. Rest in peace. <laughs> And this song is more like an exciting and fun synths instrumental track, but it still holds its euphoria and dreaminess. The skippy beat really goes well with the wild and circly synths that goes up and down drastically. And I actually really dig this track. I'm giving it an 8 to a 9 out of 10. Up next, we have Some Kind of Nature, featuring Lou Reed unexpectedly. And again... Rest in peace. Hey. Some kind of nature. Some kind of nature. Some kind of soul. Come forth with I like how his deep, raspy vocals contrasts 2D's softness and gentleness on this track, and that's why they have a lot of chemistry here. The beat and the instrumentals are really cutesy and fun and carefree. It feels like having a good time in an amusement park. And the way Lou Reed's vocals kind of gets chopped up by the end of his verse sounds like some kid is messing around with Lou Reed's vocals during production and it gives his vocals a personality, like his vocals are playing a supporting role. And still, the chorus is very catchy and it's very plasticky and somewhat moody, pop rock and electronic track. I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. To top it off, we have On Melancholy Hill which is hands down one of the best Gorillaz songs, and it's also one of the best songs of the 2010s so far. The instrumentals are the sweetest on this track. The synths, the underwater bleeps, the drum beats, they're all very sweet and endearing. Yet there's a more melancholic side to it, which makes it sound like a goodbye song. The melodies on this track is catchy as fuck. Up on Melancholy Hill, there's a plastic tree. 
And I just can't say more to this amazing and solid and colorful and beautifully moody and dreamy song. The music video is also brilliant. I'm giving On Melancholy Hill a 10 out of 10. Broken is the next track. It has a disorienting chord progression and a dreamy moody tone. Again, okay. I'm really tired right now, by the way. I don't know why. But, uh, anyway, um... We get these wailing sirens that are kind of unorthodox and weird, and 2D's singing alone without any features. It's not a bad track, but it's one of the more weaker ones. Still, I appreciate how light and simple it sounds. Also, I like how bobbly and colorful it is. I'm giving Broken a 7 out of 10. And a huge contrast, we get sweepstakes, which is hella confusing, and extremely messy. It sounds like three different songs playing at the same time. But it doesn't sound bad necessarily, it's just uh, unorthodox. Most Def is featured again, and the brass group Hypnotic Brass Ensemble is featured again as well. And the song kind of builds up to these abstract, grimy beats with most deaf rapping over it, 2D singing in an echoey, cutesy way, plus these bleepy, bouncy beats, the rough synths, backed by these wild, doodly horns. It's so hard to comprehend. It's like a polyrhythm gone wrong. I don't know, I'm giving this track a 7, I guess? The moodiest cut on the record would probably be the title track, which would be a perfect ending to the album, but it didn't happen. It's not the ending yet. But anyway, the bass and the melodies are really euphoric and dizzying. It's like going around a carousel, non-stop, slowly. Where were we? Yeah. It features the bassist of The Clash, Mick Jones, out of all people, and Paul Simonon. Simonon whom I do not know. I know Paul Simon, but I don't know Paul Simonon. The instrumentals are very bouncy and round and catchy as 2D sings in a more drunken and tongue-in-cheek fashion. And it hits the chorus, oh man, it's so catchy. It's a Casio on a plastic beach. It's a Casio on a plastic beach. I don't know if it's Casio or Cast Me Up, but anyway, I really like the backing vocal sound effects. Casio, Casio. And I also really love how unhealthy this song sounds. It really feeds into the central concept of Plastic Beach. I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. Up next, we have To Binge, which sounds like a very laid back and moody beach ballad, except it's theatrical. There are these sharp, echoey synths that goes cold and hot constantly, with these theatrical and loud drum bangs. And Little Dragon is featured again, and this time 2D takes the back seat, and we have yet another intimate and sensual, yet somewhat sad performance from the vocalist of Little Dragon. I'm giving to binge a 7 to an 8 out of 10. Cloud of Unknowing features Bobby Womack, and it is a very epic and beautiful and slow ballad, backed by an entire orchestra, that is Sinfonia Viva again. And this track gets really emotional and powerful as Bobby Womack sings with his expressive and gargly voice. While it is a bit uneventful, it's rather impactful. Well, rest in peace, and I'm giving this song a 7 to an 8 as well. To end the album off, we get Pirate Jet, which is also a great album ender. It's slow, it's drunken, it feels like the sunset, except it's less upfront and intense and euphoric like Demon Days, but it's more like a cold and moody and dull sunset in a remote island of trash. But yet, Gorillaz still has a bit of hope and humor. 
we get these watery auto-tune vocals that sounds like Daft Punk for some reason, and then we get these keyboards and strings that are so reluctant and drunken. As 2D kind of raps and sings a little bit very slowly in a deep voice, Damon Albarn really fits well into the track, and the song overall feels like the end credits of a play, a goodbye song, a farewell song, in fact. I'm giving Pirate Jet an 8 to a 9 out of 10. It's all good news now, because I left the taps running. It's all good news now, because we left the taps running for a hundred years. So drink into the drink. Oh yeah, I also completely forgot to talk about Donkomatic, which is one of the B-sides of the, of the album Plastic Beach. And, uh, um, despite the fact that, uh, 2D is not really on this song, I still really like this song. It's really sweet, the instrumentals sound really intriguing, and, uh, I think the vocal performances are not bad. So, definitely check out Donkomatic as well. Overall, this is probably the second moodiest album by Gorillaz, the moodiest being the Now Now. And it's also very dreamy and euphoric. It has this happy, sad quality to it that I really, really dig. And there are also many great and tasteful features on this album. It's like Damon Albarn went shopping to get these features because he has so many connections in the industry. And even though there are a lot of features, the persona of the virtual band itself still shines through. The bright guitars by Noodle is still here. The crunchy drums by Russell is still here. The nasty, grimy bass by Murdoch is there, and of course we have 2D's singing. And despite the fact that there are a couple of filler songs on this album that leaves me scratching my head, there are also a lot of amazingly arranged, well-written, catchy songs that deserves a 10 on the tracklist. The worst is White Flag, and the best is On Melancholy Hill. I'm giving Gorillaz' Plastic Beach an 8 out of 10. So, have you listened to Gorillaz's the plastic, uh, Gorillaz's Plastic Beach? From 1 to 10, how much it's rated? Like if you like it. And subscribe if you want more. Yeah, and by the way, tell me, what album do you want me to review next? I'm thinking Joy Division. Or King Gizzard.